Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we begin today the week of prayer for Christian unity. Catholic, Orthodox, and Protestant Christians come together this week so that we could pray for perfect Christian unity among all believers in Jesus Christ. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass for Christian unity, let us first acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Make known in us, O Lord, the abundance of your mercy, and in the power of your Spirit, remove the divisions between Christians, that your Church may appear more clearly as a sign raised high among the nations and that the world, enlightened by your Spirit, may believe in the Christ 
whom you have sent, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Melchizedek, king of Salem and priest of God Most High, met Abraham as he returned from his defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham apportioned to him a tenth of everything. His name first means righteous king, and he was also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Without father, mother, or ancestry, without beginning of days or end of life, thus made to resemble the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. It is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so, not by a law expressed in a commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. For it is testified, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power the Lord will stretch forth from Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor. Before the day star like the dew, I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn and he will not repent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Please stand. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? But they remained silent. 
looking around at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart, Jesus said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, in our first reading today, Jesus is compared to the priest Melchizedek. And we have repeated that in our responsorial psalm. You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The first reading from the letter to the Hebrews is trying to explain to us that the priesthood of Jesus is different from the earthly priesthood. His priesthood is eternal. That is why we say, you are a priest forever. His priesthood is not worldly or earthly like the other priests in the temple. The priesthood of Jesus is eternal. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus, the eternal priest, reminds us today that there is always something eternal, something greater, something higher than what we are undergoing right now. There is always something eternal, something greater, something higher waiting for us. Ano man po ang ating pinagdaraanan ngayon, ano man ang sitwasyon natin sa mundong ito, ang pinapaalala ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo, ang pari magpakailanman, mayroon palaging naghihintay na mas dakila, mas mataas, at mas pang magpakailanman sa kung anuman ang ating pinagdaraanan sa mundong ito. That is why in our gospel reading today, Jesus was teaching the Pharisees to choose what is greater, what is higher, what is more eternal. And so in the gospel reading today, we see Jesus telling the Pharisees, what is greater, the Sabbath or to do good? What is greater, the Sabbath or to save life? Let us remember, my dear brothers and sisters, the teaching of Jesus, the eternal priest, to teach us to always choose the greater one, the higher one, the eternal one. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, we begin our week-long prayer for Christian unity. And the whole world is participating in this, the whole Christian world, not only Catholics, but the Orthodox Church, the Protestant churches are also one with us in this week of prayer for Christian unity. And we are reminded of this, to choose the greater part. Ano ba ang mas dakila? Ano ba ang mas mahalaga? Ang pagkakahati-hati natin? 
ang pagkakawatak-watak natin o mas dakila ang magmahalan tayo, mas dakila ang mag-ibigan tayo bilang mga Kristiyano. What is the greater part? What is the higher choice? What is the eternal one? Is it our differences? Or is it our unity in faith and in love of the one Lord, our eternal priest, Jesus Christ? My dear brothers and sisters, today we are reminded by Jesus, our eternal priest, that there is always something eternal, something greater, something higher waiting for all of us. Kung ang pinagdadaanan mo ngayon sa tingin mo ay pinakamababa na na parte ng buhay mo, if you feel now that you are in the lowest moment of your life, Jesus, the eternal priest, reminds you there is something greater, something higher, and something eternal waiting for you. Amen. Please stand. Christ liberated us from the destructive powers of evil and sin so that we could be free to cooperate in spreading the good news. We ask God for this grace and blessing. For every petition, let us say, God of love, stretch out your hand. God of love, stretch out your hand, that the Church may seek to free persons from whatever stands in the way of communicating the Gospel to man of our time. Let us pray to the Lord. God, God of, of love, love, stretch out, out your, your hand. hand, that the Lord may give hope and encouragement to the starving of the world who are unjustly deprived of food, clothing, and freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. God of love, stretch out your hand. That Christians everywhere may not be people of legalisms and outward observances, but people with a heart who do what they have to do as God's children. Let us pray to the Lord. God of love, stretch out your hand. May God help us repair the harm that we have inflicted upon each other and the divisions we have created among our people. May God send the grace of His Spirit to heal our divisions and gift us with the unity for which Jesus prayed. Let us pray to the Lord. God, God of love, stretch out your hand. That we may show concern to those who are suffering so that we may lighten their burdens and help them to keep trusting in God. Let us pray to the Lord. God, God of love, stretch out your hand. That the dead and those who mourn their loss may see hope and comfort in the resurrection of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. God, God of love, stretch out your hand. Loving God, we claim to belong to you and to your Son. Help us through your Spirit to love you by caring and making other people happy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your Church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through Him, you brought us to the knowledge of your truth, so that by the bond of one faith and one baptism, we might become His body. Through Him, you poured out your Holy Spirit among all the nations, so that in a wondrous manner, He might prompt and engender unity in the diversity of your gifts, dwelling within your adopted children and filling and ruling the whole church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously, Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Receiving the sacrament of your Christ, we pray, O Lord, that you may renew in your church the sanctifying grace you have given, and that all who glory in the name of Christian may come to serve you in unity of faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our healing rosary for the world this evening will be hosted by the Mary Mother of Hope Landmark Chapel in Makati as they celebrate the 152nd anniversary of the apparition of Our Lady of Hope in Pontmain in France. And it will be led by their mission station priest, our former rector, Father Reginald Malikdem. And so tonight, as we come together at 9 p.m., let us pray the healing rosary for the world in front of the image of Mary, our Mother of Hope. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.